Hello and welcome to the Absolute State of Science. I am your host. This is what a galaxy looks like in space. We belong to the Milky Way galaxy. I'm sure you've heard of it. And I have one question, one question for you. What is in the center of this? And so you say, well, for me to accurately answer that question, I must know what what are galaxies made of? What's what's going on in space? You go, well, according to this guy, 99.9% .9 of the universe is made up of plasma. That's an interesting word. I have no idea what that means. Does that mean like a TV? Kinda. Well, where is the plasma element on the periodic table of elements? And you go, well, it's not an element at all. It's a type of, it's a state of matter. So it's a state that matter can be in. So you have solid, and then liquid, and then gas, and then plasma. So you have an ice cube, where it's frozen, less energy, a liquid, where it's a little more hot, and it's, you know, a liquid, water, regular water. Then you have steam, and then if you keep heating it up, you have hydrogen, plasma, or other, the oxygen, plasma. It's the next state of matter after gas. It's really exciting. Lightning is made of plasma, these balls are made of plasma, and actually the Earth's atmosphere, the whole atmosphere, is made of plasma. Or at least one of the layers is made of plasma. The, the ionosphere is an ionized part of Earth's upper atmosphere. And ionized is code for plasma. So an, anytime you see the word, it's an ionized gas, that just means it's plasma. It's the same thing. Well, plasma has multiple ways that it can look. It has a dark current mode, such as the ionosphere, it has a normal glow mode, and then arc mode. So the normal glow mode can be seen in burnt out bulbs. Uh, in, in fluorescent bulbs, when it, when it changes, the pressure within the lamps decreases. The arc discharge becomes a glow discharge. So the arc, which is the strongest mode, becomes a normal glow discharge. These are known things that happen, to, that happen inside of plasma. And the last thing about plasma is that the stronger the current, the brighter the plasma. And so I have a little, just a couple pictures here. This is, so electricity is, is plasma. It's an electrical state of matter. So there's one amp of current going through with a spark, and here's 10 amps of current. So you can see that it is, it's visibly brighter. So plasma is not a gas, liquid, or solid. It is the fourth state of matter. It's the electrical state of matter. Plasma often behaves like a gas, so it looks like gas, except that it conducts electricity and is affected by magnetic field. And plasma is common on the astronomical scale. I would say it's more than common as it's 99% of the universe. I'd say that it's the majority of what it is, the vast majority. 0.1% is not, it's, that's a lot. So fluorescent and neon lights contain plasma and the sun is also, also fire. Fire is also plasma. And because it obviously conducts electricity and it's 99% of the universe, we have found the universe's highest electric currents. So we have found giant electric currents in space. Well, I wonder why that is. Well, that's because plasma, again, from the extremely prestigious research area, interplanetary medium, the space between planets. So between here and Mars, plasma is, there's plasma there. In the interstellar medium, the space between star systems, okay. Intergalactic medium, the space between galaxies. So the space between galaxies, space between galaxies, or the space in between, so these galaxies are far apart, so either this space, all of space, it doesn't really matter where, any of the black you're seeing, that's all plasma. So this is made of plasma. So 99.9% .9 of the universe made up of plasma. Plasma conducts electricity. Electricity exists in the universe. Where, those, where there is electricity, there is a magnetic field. Okay, so real quick, I'm just gonna go over a couple experiments that we have here. This first one is a electric current going into salt water and flakes of rust. And the other one that you'll see with the glowy stuff is the same thing, it's an electric current in salt water. And this is the, it's a space, I'm sorry, this is on the International Space Station. This is a sewing needle and he rubs it with a paper towel which creates a, an electrostatic field exactly like what you do with the balloon in your hair and then stick it to the wall. So how the balloon gets charged up, this needle is charged up, and then he drops little little uh, droplets of water on it. And because there's no gravity, you get to see the force of the static field without any other forces acting upon it. So check that out, here they are.
Right, so that was static electricity, and you saw that it makes a little spiraling. Looks exactly like, I don't know, planets orbiting. No, nothing, don't even think about it. So the reason that he had a little tub filled with salt water and then put a current through it with iron flakes in it so you could see what's going on, the reason he did that is to demonstrate this effect called magnetohydrodynamics. A very simple word that I know everyone on the planet is totally familiar with. And all that is is the study of magnetic properties of electrically conducting fluids. Electrically conducting fluids. Where have I heard? Oh, magnetofluids include plasmas. That makes sense. And they also include salt water. Didn't, it didn't resemble anything I can think of off the top of my head that is made of plasma that exists in space. Didn't, didn't resemble a thing. The sun also is a magnetohydrodynamic system that is not well understood. Fancy that. Something in space that's not well understood. And so would you, would you assume that this phenomenon that happens has something to do with electricity and magnetism? And you go, no, it has nothing to do with electricity and magnetism because I know what's inside the center of every galaxy. You go, wow, that's cool. So you are an option A type person. You go, yes, I think the inside of every galaxy, there is a little man and that little man is bending time. <laughs> you go, he's bending time. Wow, that when you say time bending, are you? Do you mean like, like? Uh, do you mean like slow Mobius or Ang from the Last Airbender or Katara? Is this what you mean? Like it's some guy who's just bending space and time? And they go, no, no, no. It's not a. It's not a human. It's a. It's a hole, and it's black, and nothing can escape it. Not anything. No, not anything can escape it. And I go, wow. Well, do you have any proof that we've ever discovered one of those? And you go, of course I do. In fact, we've done it multiple times. LIGO does it again. A second robust binary black hole. Coalescence observed. 2016. Mmm, that is pretty cool. So they couldn't actually show a picture of a black hole. And so here's an artist's illustration of, I assume, what is, uh, is a galaxy? Well, this is what they actually look like. So they look like this, and they're the brightest things that we can see. Hmm. Well, why would anyone assume that? Why would anyone assume that a black hole is in the center of a galaxy? So why do we assume black holes are in the center of a galaxy? You know, once you go black, you never go back. How G2 survived a black hole in our Milky Way's heart. Okay, so G2, whatever a uh, an object, whatever that means, uh, survived a black hole. So it went back. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to go back. Oh, what's this? A researcher shows that black holes do not exist. Huh, but they detected them two years after the researcher said they don't exist. I'm a little confused as to what's going on here. So, well, how do we get on this idea? How do we get, where did the black hole idea come from? Well, it didn't technically come from Einstein, but for our purposes, we're going to say that it did. This is of Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity that came out in 1916, 102 years ago. 1916. The first time that we ever proved Einstein's theory of general relativity was in 1919 with Sir Arthur Eddington right here. He went out during an eclipse, looked up at the stars and said, holy shit, that's gravitational lensing, just as Einstein predicted. Light around a massive object, such as a black hole, is bent, causing it to act as a lens for the things that lie behind it. Astronomers routinely use this method to study stars and galaxies behind massive objects. Wow, cool. Well, have we continued to see that? Yes. A lot. We see it all the time. It's extremely common. Gravitational lensing. Really, really normal phenomenon. It looks like this. Light is being bent because of gravity and no other force. So the gravitational lens bends the light rays because it's bending through the fabric of space and time. And because the light is bending through space and time, the only force strong enough to keep this shape is a black hole in the center that is so dense it's so dense every black hole is filled with so much so much going on it's so dense that space and time bend in a it collapses onto itself infinitely anyway no one ever has come up with an alternative explanation for what could possibly be happening through a plasma environment except maybe this person oh look a refraction based alternative explanation for the bending of light near a star gravitational red blue shift and a black hole so this is a paper they published that says uh, yeah maybe you know how light refracts how this is a normal occurrence 
and when light changes mediums, that the way it looks is different, and we live in a plasma environment, and because the Earth's atmosphere, which has plasma, naturally bends light, maybe gravitational lensing is from refraction. Just maybe. So could it be, this is the second option for what could be in the center of a galaxy. Could it be a dense plasma focus? Something like this. You can look up that article. It's on regular old Wikipedia. Or is it a plasmoid? A coherent structure of plasma and magnetic fields? Is it something like that and they occur naturally? Is it something that could be like this that would generate this sort of shape? Well, I don't know. Is it, We have plasma on Earth. Is it is it scalable? Yeah, uh, actually, plasma is scalable because electricity is scalable because the stronger the current, the brighter the plasma. So it's something to consider. This is option number two. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's option number two. Right, so I just want to talk about comets real quick. This is what they look like uh, up close. This is their little, little uh, nucleus. Comets are thought to be dirty snowballs. Comets are icy bodies in space that release gas or dust and often compared to dirty snowballs. This is an asteroid. Asteroids are 100% undisputed rocks. Comets look like this. This is what comets look like when they're, when they're coming in sometimes. NASA Hubble sees asteroids spouting six comet-like tails. Now an asteroid is 100% a rock. So why would a rock spout six comet-like tails? Well, you can see what they look like. They look very much like how a comet looks. So NASA, new NASA model gives glimpse into the invisible world of electric asteroids? What? Space may appear empty. A soundless vacuum. Yes, that is what I've been taught. It is a soundless vacuum. Well, it's not an absolute void. It flows with electric activity. Wow. It's a rock in an environment that sometimes makes comet-like tail. Huh. <laughs> okay, let's check out this. St. Elmo's fire. St. Elmo's fire is a weather phenomenon in which luminous... Luminous plasma is created by coronal discharge from a sharp pointed object in a strong electric field. So St. Elmo's fire looks like this. It is St. Elmo's fire on a ship at sea. See the coronal discharge of plasma coming off of it. It exists on planes. You can see it looks exactly like lightning. Lightning. This is a electric arc in an atmosphere. And this is an electric arc in a vacuum. I'll show you a video of that in just a second. Here's that video. And what you're looking at here is you see these plasma flows or plasma currents, however you want to see it. And then other times in the video, you see what is clearly lightning. There is no difference in the current being applied, the amount of voltage, the amperage, or anything other than the ambient environment inside of this chamber. When there is lightning bolts, that is when this chamber is full of air. When you have the plasma streams like you see here, we have done nothing but turn on the vacuum and create a vacuumous environment. It is the same electricity changing when the environmental conditions change. Comets exist in the space between planets and the space between planets is filled with plasma. Plasma conducts electricity and produces magnetic fields. So could, theoretically, these the plasma jets coming off of them. Another thing, the moon, too static for astronauts? Interesting, high voltage sparks, like little rings of Saturn from Cosmos, the science of everything. How electricity pulls a drop of liquid apart. Okay, it looks exactly like the planet Saturn in an electric field. And so I hear you, you're saying, well, it seems really plausible to me that something is bending space and time and that they're the same force. I, I, it could be plasma, but I'm not sold. But let's, I'm going to offer up a couple lifelines here. So the first lifeline that we have is Occam's Razor. Yes, uh, Occam's Razor. So Occam's Razor. Uh, no more things should be presumed to exist than are absolutely necessary, i.e. the fewer assumptions an explanation of a phenomenon depends on, the better the explanation. Or more simply put, all things being equal, the simplest solution tends to be the best one. So that's lifeline number one. So I know what you're saying. You're saying I'm not sure if I want to go with option one or I want to go with option two. Well, I should tell you your prize. Do you know what your prize is? 
It's actually, uh, yeah, it's it's 6.4 billion. That's your prize for knowing what's in the center of a galaxy. Did you know that? And you're going, well, why is it 6.4 billion? Well, that's because that's the Large Hadron Collider. That's one experiment that we built over 30 years. $6.4 billion. U.S. alone contributed $531 million. So that's how much we're, we're paying for. Also, the Large Hadron Collider has absolutely failed to detect dark matter, and uh, dark matter is a whole other thing. But pretty much they said, well, Einstein's math is wrong. There has to be dark matter there for Einstein's theories to hold up. And they spent $6.4 billion and have not found it. The reason that we built the LHC was firstly to find the Higgs, okay, it worked, and secondly to test these kind of ideas that we've been having to see what lies beyond. So the LHC has been running, it's been running for two years, it's been running like an absolute dream. It's just, it's a perfect machine. Uh, two years, uh, this is what it's seen. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay, all of these fantastic, beautiful ideas that we've had, none of them are showing up at all. And the question going forward is, you know, what are we going to do about it? Uh, you know, how are we going to make progress in understanding the next layer of physics uh, when the LHC isn't seeing anything and our ideas just, just don't appear to be uh, the way that nature works? Here's another little nugget of information. So uh, this is a galaxy that we saw. And would you say that this is all plasma that is connected to this and other things? Would you say that they're connected? If you answer yes, a connection between them would invalidate a law of astronomy, the Hubble Law, that underpins the entire Big Bang cosmology and modern astronomy. That's probably bad. Another thing we should take, take note of, this is the second lifeline here, is that the scientific method has an ongoing process. So we make observations. That's the first step we do, is we make observations. We are 100 years past where Einstein was. We actually have things in space that we personally have sent into space, humans. That, didn't, that wasn't around in Einstein's time. He didn't have that. We have telescopes in space. Come on. We have witnessed things that Einstein could never have witnessed. So I'm going to ask you, if Einstein were alive today, do you think he would have reached the exact same conclusions he did? Do you think he would have looked at a galaxy and said, eh, it's probably something so dark and dense that uh, light can't even escape it? And so I ask you for the $6.4 billion question using Occam's razor, saying that all things being equal, the simplest solution intends to be the best one. So do you think it is space and time bending in on itself infinitely, or do you think it is something with plasma and electromagnetism? Right now, mainstream science has picked option A. I think option A is dog shit. I think option B has a lot more evidence, is a lot simpler, and makes way more sense. I'm just saying we can either look at it like this, or we can look at it like this. And if we continue to look at it as if it's a black hole, this is our fate. This is the fate of all stars. This is the fate of all matter. This is the fate of everything. Is because of the heat death, the inevitable heat death of the universe. So that does not sound happy. Maybe this, I'm not sure what the theory would be, but maybe it's a less sad theory. Either way, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Uh, what does the gravitationally powered thing in your chest tell you what option we should pick? So, thank you. Have a great day. Stop, take some time to think. Figure out what's important to you. Stop, take some time to think. Figure out what's important to you. Stop, take some time to think. Figure out what's important to you. Gotta make a serious decision. This is my take on, on this. Um, this is, you know, uh, this is the equation that uh, uh, we know is right. <clears throat> this is sort of the bedrock of our, our understanding. But although we know it's right, there's an awful lot in this equation that we haven't understood. There's an awful lot, to me, that's still mysterious in this equation. So my response is, I think that maybe we should just go back to the drawing board 
and uh, start to challenge some of the assumptions and paradigms that, that we've been holding for, for the past 30 years. So I, I, I should admit, I, I feel quite energised, actually, by the lack of results for the LHC. You know, I, I, I sort of, it feels good to me that everyone was, was wrong. You know, it's when we're wrong that we start to make, make progress. 